Fine. So linear regression, as I told you, uh, which we are going to see today, it's a supervised learning model for prediction problem, for real valued prediction problem, which is also called as regression. If you if you uh, see the literal meaning of regression, regression means you know fitting something. Okay. So so regression means basically you know iteratively you have to adjust, 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 and you know fit something. So and this fitting is related to not not related to making some boundary but related to fitting the data in order to predict some real value and that is why you know re, uh, regression is very different from classification problem although both are supervised learning but classification problems in classification problem what you want to do is to classify some new data or unseen data into categories, into classes. Just a simple example, if I will tell you, uh, from, from an image, you have to tell whether it is an image of a cat or a dog. So this is like class prediction, the category prediction, okay. But linear regression or, or any kind of regression is mostly deals with predicting the values or or say predicting some estimate, estimating something basically. So if if I uh, if I can show you here, uh, so as we have seen in, in the demo okay. session also, there are some data points, and these data points have a trend that as your x-axis is growing, your y-axis is also growing, right? As you see, this x value as this is moving this side, it is also moving upwards, right? So, so basically the general trend is going this side. So, uh, the linear regression problem says that if you have data points like this, this is historical data. This is, this is also called as training data. Okay, in machine learning okay. technology, these data which we already have will be called as training data okay training data or mm -hmm. or i will say previously known data okay or or i will say uh, historical data okay which which i okay. have okay. now depending upon this uh, data you you can estimate the trend through a line suppose you can estimate that this line is going to fit my data as best as possible. So if here is size of flat, which is my feature, this is this is my mm -hmm. feature. Okay. And in the, on this side you have y basically y is the cost of flat, cost of flat. This is basically the, you can say if, if, if it would be a supervised learning classification problem, this could be a label. So it's, it's like correspondingly where, where you, in a classification problem, you have label or category. Here, this is the value which you have to estimate. Okay. Cost. Mm -hmm. This is called as cost yeah. of, cost of flat. Cost. Okay. This is not a feature. Do not confuse it with the feature. This is cost label. of flat. Yeah, this is also called as in mathematical term or in a statistical term, it is also called as dependent variable. What it is called? Dependent variable. Dependent variable. Why it is called as dependent variable? Because the value of this particular feature, I mean the, this particular variable depends upon this size of flat. And that's why the size of flat is also called as independent variable independent variable so so this linear regression you may study if you will go for some data analytics kind of course there also maybe they will be covering this thing and there instead of using feature and and label they will be using these words independent variable dependent variable so this is basically a dependent variable and this is a independent variable from historical data here what we are our objective is to estimate the trend, if you can capture the pattern, if you can capture the trend, then on a new data, suppose a new data came where the size of flat is say 2500 square feet, right? 
so on x axis you know where is 2500 square feet right here right yes suppose 2000 square feet is here so on x axis you know so so the question is can you estimate what would be the cost of this particular flat so you can just project this data here on the line and from the line you can project this on y axis where you can estimate this as a cost okay mm. so this is a particular objective so in in many problems where you know like like this one housing cost prediction problem or uh, a sales prediction problem like sales estimation problem like how many sales will happen on 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 december or on february or in which month what will be the sales so this kind of prediction any value based prediction okay that can be done through regression maybe linear regression maybe polynomial regression that right now i am not talking about but i am just telling you the kind of uh, problems this linear regression handles this is basically some value based prediction it can do like a uh, lot of the best Sorry, uh, this is based out of my uh, historical data. Yeah, historical data. Whatever so, data yeah, yeah. provided. Yeah, machine learning okay. is all about historical data. All these models they will require some training data. This this historical data is called as training data. Suppose just take an example. In in your whole life, if you would have not have seen cars or any vehicle. suppose you did, uh, you have never seen a bus now first time the bus will come will you be able to identify that this is bus no of course not no. you will you will say what, what what is this new thing so even as a human if we don't have previously historical data in our mind we cannot predict anything about that thing, particular subject right so so we always need to have this training data this historical data in order to predict on something new data if i show you uh, as as a kid suppose uh, we we are shown few cars like see this is a car going see that is a car going so maybe you have seen honda city or i10 i20 huh? and then mm -hmm. some fine day if you find Uh, any other car say swift or or say any other car say mercedes or whatever bolero still you will be able to say that this is a car you have never seen bolero in life but still at least you will be able to you will be able to say that this is a car why because from the previously known data you your mind has learned your mind has got tuned that okay if this kind of a structure will come which has four vehicle and it is short in height it has some driver seat and then back some seats are there so that particular structure of car you, is tuned in your brain so even if a new model or a new car comes you can easily say that this is a car so that's how uh, you know intelligence is, is carried forward in any case so same thing is followed in machine learning or say artificial intelligence that by the previously known data you are deducting some intelligence you are you are extracting some intelligence out of it in order to predict something new which is going to happen and and that's the but what yeah but what about uh, uh, sales forecasting of a newly launched product yeah so so of course for, yeah so of course for that those kind of problem you for for a new product you cannot uh, predict anything but in those cases also what people do if if uh, suppose if a new product is getting launched they will uh, they will go for the historical data of similar kind of product and and what are the aspects of those product so if i know that people like cheap uh, cheap products i mean the whose price is less and they in in that product they want some feature like suppose a new mobile is launched okay so how are they going to predict the the sales of that mobile by seeing the aspects of it that is called as something called as aspect based sentiment analysis just example i am giving you in that okay. particular thing what they do 
they will see the historical experiences i mean the user rating or through the reviews they will see that whether the people are satisfied with this kind of battery this kind of processor this and if those things are there in the new product they will predict i mean accordingly they will predict something like that okay the sales is going to be high or the price is going is high so the sales will be less so they will, they can predict with some machine learning model they can predict that also but regression okay. in specific will deal with such kind of data where you have a proper set suppose the, suppose number of bedroom is given and size of flat is given so suppose in mumbai you have got list of thousand such selling i mean which which those flats which have been already sold in that particular year in mumbai so suppose in 2017 1000 flats has been sold and you know that how many bedrooms were there and what was the size of flat these two things you know for say 1000 such data so if a new flat is coming your software can predict that what is going to be the cost now of course you will say that uh, what is the new thing about it even even if you tell me these two number i can predict what is going to be the cost so of course we human can uh, we human are even faster i mean in these areas but but yeah this is just a example like what regression can do uh, in in applications it can handle even say 10 to 12 features also so so given lots of features a 12 feature also it can predict something so so that's that's how regression works so to just give you an example of how practically regression work this housing cost prediction is usually uh, you know uh, taught or usually taken this this is a particular example i mean after okay. this session when we will be covering we will cover the theoretical part of and the mathematical foundation of linear regression uh, after that we will see an example how linear regression with single variable how you can build a in python also so anyway okay let let us start with the model so yeah so this is a line which which is our objective we want to fit this particular line now the first challenge which which we have is initially i don't know anything about line okay i yeah. i don't know about this line that where is this line going to fit okay okay and even if you see even if you see the data by seeing you can of course say that okay this is this is these are the data i mean just by looking at the visualization part you can say that okay this is this is my data so probably this is going to be the line which will be fit but how can the software will learn how can you make your system your machine learning system learn this thing okay like one time you can manually fit it but sometime if some other kind of data comes suppose the suppose the next time suppose the data comes like this this hmm. then then the line which will be fit will be like this isn't it yes it will it will never be a line like this it will it will it depends upon the day kind of data which is coming so every time you cannot manually look and then visualize and then fit what you want is hmm. automation you want that hmm. you know automatically your system should learn this line so the first challenge we have how do we find this line how how can we find this line uh, which will fit this particular data or which will fit any kind of data where there is a linear relationship between the data and see uh, one one particular thing if you see about this data one uh, aspect this here your data points have a relationship with this your independent variable has a linear relationship with this with the dependent variable isn't it mm -hmm. so as yes, yes. this, this uh, x is moving your y is also moving right so it has a linear dependence so linear regression will only work if you have a linear dependence if you don't have linear dependence then don't 
ex expect linear regression to work. If your data is like this, mm. all distributed, you cannot go on fit a line and expect that it will do uh, it will do uh, give a good prediction. No. So uh, that's why I mean uh, these I mean one model you cannot generalize to everything. This particular model will work when you have a linear dependence of independent of dependent variable on independent variable on your x. Right? Even in second graph, uh, there is a linear uh, dependencies are there. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, in, in the second graph also it, it, there is a linear relationship. In any kind of graph, suppose a data your data is like this. So here the linear dependence is like this. So in any kind of data, the linear, if there is a linear dependence, your software should be able to capture that pattern, that trend basically. So okay. now talking about this particular data set, how are we going to find that line? If if my uh, suppose at one from one fine step my line my software starts. It can put a line here also, here also, here also, here also, here also, here also. There can be n number of lines it, it can find. But how do it it finds, how do the software will learn that this particular line will be the best suitable? Why not this? Why not this? Why not this? So that's the challenge, okay? So uh, if, if you see, uh, now I will start basically, so, so if this is a challenge, so for this particular objective to find the best fit line, this linear regression has some mathematical foundation for this or a mathematical algorithm for this in order to find this best fit line. And this particular algorithm is called as gradient descent. Okay. This particular algorithm is called as gradient descent. Of course, we will be seeing this gradient descent in detail that how this actually find this line. Okay. So this gradient descent algorithm starting from any random location in iterations, in loop, in iteration by iteration. I mean, you, you have to write a for loop for that. In iteration by iteration, it can find the best fit line for you okay now okay now uh, now here if you see uh, and and so linear regression is the name of the whole model linear regression is the name of whole model and the process through which you find this optimal line the process through which you find the best fit line is called gradient descent so never get confused between these two. So the process of optimization, the optimization procedure being followed in linear regression is done by gradient descent. Gradient descent is an, what we call as optimization algorithm. What it is called as? Optimization algorithm. These are some mathematical or say statistical terms that you, you have to learn. It is called as optimization technique or optimization method. Okay. Now, what is an optimization method? Optimization method, all these optimization techniques basically tries to find the either the maxima of something or the minima of something. Okay. Either it will uh, find the minimum thing or uh, so what do we want here we want that the error should be minimum isn't it if if instead of this line i draw a line like this this will have more error right this is too far from these points so the error the distance between these points are very high so the error is more isn't it so the optimization method optimization technique have an objective which which in in the iterative process, it fulfills that in, with iterations it will reach towards the minimum minimum error. We will talk about these things in detail. I am just giving you the overview of this as of now. So gradient descent is an optimization method. Linear regression is the whole model. The linear regression tells that you have a linear dependence with of the independent variable with the dependent variable, and we are going to fit a line. 
okay when i say polynomial regression it means you are going to you can fit a curve also okay mm-hmm. so so these what are you fitting what is the boundary which are you going to fit that depends upon the model whether it is linear regression or a quadratic regression or a polynomial regression or what kind of regression it is that is basically known as your model but the way of finding that particular model the way of finding that particular boundary that technique is called as optimization technique which is gradient descent which is used in this linear regression okay i mean this is one most popular technique which is used now uh, coming to this point i uh, i want to show you what actually it does okay mm-hmm. so so what actually it does is suppose you have this data right same same data mm-hmm. so gradient descent says first thing start from any random position start from random any position, position. any random position any random position okay so so maybe you will start from here okay then second it says iteratively now iteration in iterations so here you are putting basically a for loop in iterations yeah. update your line update your line so now in iteration just move towards the best fit and and finally when you reach towards the best fit best fit when you when you best reach to the best fit you will stop your iteration stop your iteration okay okay this is a general way procedure to go and this this the thing which i have told you right now this algorithm this is very very defined right now i am just i am giving you over view i will come to the mathematics now okay so so suppose this this is a data point right now if you are going to fit a line suppose this is a line can you tell me what is the equation of line which we used to study in in maybe in our school days suppose this is y okay. which is independent sorry dependent variable and this is x which is dependent variable so suppose this x is population of the city what is this population of city population of city and this is y is profit of outlet profit of say kfc outlet so uh, i am a kfc owner and i want to open i i used to open outlets in various cities so i have a historical data that if this is the amount of uh, if this is the number of population in the city my outlet is going to make this much profit so 1 lakh dollar okay mm-hmm. some amount of profit my outlet is going to make if say 10 lakh is a city population i usually have 1 lakh profit now suppose i am going to i want to open a, a outlet in pune i want to invest in pune so with the historical data with the population of pune i can predict whether i am going to have a good profit or a low profit or maybe no profit so so i want to predict that how much profit will my outlet be making now of course you you may argue that the profit of an outlet depends upon various factor what are the prices you are keeping how is the crowd quality whether the most of the crowd is poor or suppose you are suppose you are opening up this outlet in mumbai or or in 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 cst or in cp delhi then of course the you know the profit will be high but if you are going to open it in a village maybe nobody will come there right so of course there are many factors but right now we are talking about linear regression with single variable where the dependence of the y is only on one variable 
<coughs> sorry okay so uh, what i was uh, talking about is like what is the equation of line which we study in our school time this is the uh, equation of line y equal to mx plus c now here i am going to use a little bit different definition y is equal to theta not plus theta 1 x this x is what population population this y is what cost so oh, given a population yeah sorry this is profit yeah this this is what profit so so given a population ha huh, i can predict the profit right suppose i know the theta not and theta 1 hmm. if these two things i know and I, suppose i am going to open it in pune i can know the i i will know the x also right i know what is the population of pune maybe from wikipedia so i can estimate what is the profit i know this theta not is what we call it c and this is what we called it m in in our school yeah. so this hmm. theta not theta 1 is basically the slope of line if you remember if you don't remember maybe you can just after this session you can go and look at what is the equation of line and this theta not is basically uh, the the constant term c basically this is also called as bias sometime ah. so so this is the slope of line and this is the constant term or bias so so if you, if you remember what does this theta not this theta not is also called as intercept intercept yeah, yeah. so in is it is intercept or bias or constant term fine this is called as slope of the line so these two theta not and theta 1 are called parameters of my model what it is called parameters, parameters of my model i have to find the line basically i have to find the th best theta not and theta 1 which will which can you know fit this data if if i uh, if i i will get little bit more deeper what is this theta not this intercept suppose this is the line suppose this is the line what is theta not theta not is basically the y intercept this part mm. this will be your theta not y intercept so suppose this value is say 100 so your theta not will be 0 minus 100 yeah and and suppose and and theta 1 is basically the slope this this slope mm -hmm. how much tilted is our line right so line can be like this also like this also like this also so from same position say here with this particular theta not i can make a line like this also like this also mm -hmm. like this also mm -hmm. like this also so what is changing among these lines theta 1 is changing theta 1 tells you the slope it's the tangent actually okay so basically if you make a a, a right angle triangle like this theta not will tell you the slope tan theta basically it will tell you the tan theta if you remember how do we used to calculate in our school days this theta 1 y1 y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 something like that anyway we will not go in those things as of now but i just wanted to tell you that for each line for suppose this line this line this line so this line this line for every one theta not and theta 1 is going to be different because these are the parameters these are my parameters okay okay so 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 basically the whole objective is to learn this theta not and theta 1 the whole objective lies in this that you have to learn theta oh. not and theta 1 if you can learn the the that the theta 1 and theta not which can best fit this data which can fit this data in in minimal error that will be superb that will be my i mean i say that my training is done i have captured the pattern isn't it so now okay 
so now uh, now come to the problem so this mathematical formulation you understood yeah now i will come to a sep uh, separate thing maybe through slide i will like to show you that uh, yeah this slide maybe see this is called a model representation this this the same thing i showed you you have data points size of flat price in dollars maybe you can fit a line like this right then if suppose a flat comes of 1250 you can tell the predict the price once you have learned this pattern learn this line right okay now i will come to uh, uh, this this is how your line looks like theta not plus theta over x this, this is that okay now i want to know uh, uh, i want to tell you about cost function okay cost function of linear regression with one variable this you have to understand it in a i mean you have to understand it properly in order to understand how gradient descent works okay so, so this thing is very important so given that suppose you have these sizes of flat and this is the price this price is in thousand dollars okay so okay. think that how how is this price so low it, it's in it's in dollars right thousand dollars so if you have the okay. size and this is your historical data this is your training data historical. this is your historical data now you have to my purpose was my objective was to fit the line over this right now how do you define the cost how do you define that my line is a better fit or not i mean suppose i draw this data point hmm. now this line will be fitting it in a best way right yes now how can i say suppose i have two lines one is, is this line and another line is suppose uh this line now which one is a better fit among these two forget about this line okay basically there should be a, a, a comparison a comparative thing right that can tell that no your line is bad or my line is good so basically that is the cost function which will tell you the quality of line i mean how good is your line with the data this is called as cost function this cost function is just a fancy name of error term also it is also called as error term what it is called error term right so how do you calculate that that is important so i am going to write these Uh, maybe these values here say 2104 was a size this is basically the size and this is your cost okay. don't don't confuse this cost with this cost function this cost function is basically the error term this cost function is something different rather i would write write here price so that you won't get confused in this okay. Okay. now this 2100 is being sold in 460 1416 230 i will i will take anything say 1000 yeah, yeah. it's 150 and so 500 square foot flat is just of 100 dollar right so this is the historical data i have now this line i have fit and this line i have two lines i have isn't it for this particular data i want to know which one is a better fit i i none of them is the best fit just for comparison i am telling which one is the better fit so if this line i know how do i say that this is the line this line i know if i know this line i must be knowing about the theta not or theta one of this line hmm. also i will be knowing theta not and theta one of this line isn't it so now i am going to calculate the cost function or say the error just look at how i am going to calculate so this theta not and theta 1 if i know and if i know this x size of flat can i predict suppose the predicted value so this price is y now predicted value i will make it y hat okay like this mm -hmm. so can i predict this 
cost this particular price can i predict the price with this this theta not and theta one right so suppose, okay. suppose this theta not is something so this theta not is what is a y say minus 4 huh? so i will say minus 4 plus now say theta 1 this theta 1 is basically uh, let's say anything say 0.5 mm -hmm. so into i will do x 21004 right this will come out to be some value mm -hmm. so it come come came out to be say 1011 just an example mm -hmm. So okay. your predicted price is what? What is the total price? Thousand eleven. And what was the actual price? Four sixty. This is our historical data. So we also know the actual price. That is why it is called a supervised learning. You remember supervised learning? When you also know the labels, when you also know the cost, when you also know the price, the thing which you want to predict. that you know already for the historical data so this is the actual price this is the actual price yeah. and this is the predicted price this i have predicted through this line of course it will come weird of course this will not match this why because it would at least be near to this if my line would be this yes if i my line would be this then at least it will be near to it but now when my line is this it is 1011 if you will go with this line na with the theta not and theta one of this yeah. line it will even go mm -hmm. weird it will even come more weird mm -hmm. for this particular line okay so what i want to say my predicted thing is far away or say there is an error between my predicted value and the actual value okay? actual value so the error or the cost function or the error i will define it like this say the predicted value say y hat or or instead of y hat i will write it y predicted minus y actual this will be this is the error right if if anybody will ask you that what is your line predicting what is your software predicting you will say it is predicting 1011 but actually what was the value 460 so how much is the error so this is the error y predicted minus y actual isn't it now mm -hmm. you have four such sample or you say you have 40 such historical data so same error you calculate for all the data point this one this one this one this one can you calculate yes so you have to calculate for all and you have to sum it up sum it up of all actual uh, predicted and uh, for all the for all the all historical data for all the historical data and and you will put in the equation and you will predict the value and you will get the difference from the actual value Okay, predicted minus actual value. Predicted minus actual value. You will sum it for all. So this is basically okay. accumulated error. This is basically a accumulated error. Y okay. actual minus y predicted, or you can go other way also. Y predicted minus y actual, and then again a square. and then basically i equal to 1 this this y actual for i and y predicted for i because we have lots of training data right we have lots of historical data suppose we have n data so this for each one you will calculate the predicted uh, predicted and you will do, get the difference from actual how can you calculate the predicted this one uh, by formula theta o, zero plus theta right? x so anyway so 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 this is called y predicted and and so you will do this and why this is squaring this is squaring the same concept concept as we have studied deviation yesterday where i told you that if the actual suppose the actual is 460 and your predicted is 420 
So then, okay. then this will become 50, right? Actual minus yes. predicted. But suppose your software okay. predicted 500. So it becomes minus 50. So when you submit over all the training data point, these will cancel each other. So that's not right. That's not right. Yes. You have to capture the error. So for that, you square this thing so that the negative will become positive and the positive will be again positive. So it will be an accumulated error. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, because there were n data point, you will divide it by n also. Okay. okay. Anyway, see, anyway, this division of n is just a constant term. It will always be the constant, right? The number of historical mm -hmm. data. So it is not going to affect your cost anyway. But yeah, with the division with n, we do so that we can get an average error. Average error. Okay. This is also called as mean square error. What it is called as? Mean square error. Mean square error. You might have heard this term before, maybe. Or, or maybe in our school days we used to hear this term. Mean square error. So this is basically what I wanted to tell you. This is basically my error. And in machine learning terminology, and if you will hear these people in videos, they will keep calling it as a cost function. Okay. And in fact, I will. I am also going to use this word only, uh, because in machine learning models, wherever you will be, uh, you know, we will be seeing a lot of models. So everywhere, this particular cost function is the word which we use. Okay. okay. So basically, your cost function for linear regression is this. Cost function for your linear regression is this, right? Okay. And most importantly what is my objective my objective is to minimize this cost as much as possible mm -hmm. i will reiterate i mean i will iterate my repeat my objective my objective is that this particular error by actual minus y predicted should be as minimum as possible it should be minimum because when it will be minimum then my predicted thing estimate will be almost equal to actual then only it will be minimum right if if my y predicted is similar to y actual this will become zero right zero and in that case your whole error will become zero so when my whole error will become zero it means that the that particular stance at that particular line is my best fit i have to find a line that will give least error, minimum error for this particular function. I mean, if you calculate for that particular line, suppose at, at particular theta naught and theta 1, you find that this formula, which is basically this, y predicted, mm -hmm. this formula gives exactly similar kind of values and actual. Then th this particular line, which is defined by this theta naught and theta 1, will be the best fit. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, till now what we have studied, till now we have seen the cost function of linear regression. And basically we have seen how can you calculate the cost function. So, so basically if I summarize it up till now what we have done, we have also learned the hypothesis. Or we have but seen cost model. Sorry, but this cost... Which is, but this cost function is summation of all these uh, actual predicted and uh, actual values. Uh -huh. Is it right? It is, so... it is summation of the difference between actual and predicted over training data. Average. Okay, summation. Okay, so in that summation, uh, how we find the act, uh, the theta and theta zero and theta one? Which is nearby. Yeah, yeah, I will come to that. Line. I will come to that. Right now, that is why I am going step by step. I want to, okay. you to I want you to understand the terminologies so that when I will come to the process of finding theta naught and theta one, then these terminology you should not get overwhelmed that what is this, what is this. So that's why I am just building the basic things, basic background. When I will come to the gradient descent algorithm, that gradient descent algorithm that I told you, that is basically used for, you know, finding the theta naught and theta 1. 
So of course, you okay, can come to that. So till now, what you have done? What is your hypothesis and what is your model? Basically, we can say this hypothesis word is a very conventional word, which which has been you know which has been carried from 70s and 80s. So still people use this word hypothesis. But this hypothesis and model we have seen. This is nothing but as in case of our linear regression, it is this. In case of linear regression with single variable, this is this theta naught plus theta one x. Okay. So this we have seen. From this, basically, you can predict your price, right? You can get the predicted values. This thing we have learned. Then we have also learned the cost function. I am just summarizing of what what all things we have learned. So this cost function is nothing but what whatever your y predicted is minus whatever y actual was. In the in the historical data, squared over mm. and averaged over, so average error basically. So this we have seen how can you calculate the cost function from the historical data. Also, we have seen. Also, we have just got the overview about gradient descent algorithm. Mm. Okay, which says that start randomly. it says start randomly start with some random theta not and theta 1 ah. okay and then in iterations in iterations go on finding go on finding theta not and theta 1 which which this go on finding theta not and theta 1 which will minimize minimize right. your cost function cost function now when here i am using this word cost function you know what is your cost function right mm -hmm. so gradient descent says you start from any random proposition theta not and theta 1 and in mm -hmm. iterations you go on finding the Best theta not and theta one. You just search. You just go on searching mm -hmm. theta not and theta one, which will give the best cost. I mean minimum cost. Mm -hmm. So that is why when I say that go on finding theta not and theta one, which will minimize your cost function. When I say that, it means that this particular algorithm, which is an iterative process, which because it is going in iterations. so this particular algorithm which is an iterative process when i say that it will minimize your cost function at that point of time it becomes an optimization problem okay okay so i i call this technique as optimization technique because this is optimizing optimizing your cost function this is fine going to find the minimum of your cost function right now mm -hmm. now the question which will be in your mind is like why are you vaguely really saying that go on finding theta not and theta 1 there are so many possible combination of theta not and theta 1 tell me something concrete that how do i go on finding theta not and theta 1 so so yeah i will i will come to that again i will uh, maybe we will go little deep to understand how this theta not and theta 1 find before that i want to show you something Okay. Okay. Great. Can you see this image? Yes. Great. So, can you see this point? These points? Yes. Uh, cross points. This is my training data, right? Mm -hmm. So, just do not look at right hand side as of now. Just focus on the left hand side, okay? Okay. Now, on this particular point, I have chosen this line. Is this line seems to a, be a better fit for this no. data? No. Now, this line, how I have chosen? I have randomly chosen it. Okay. I have randomly chosen this line. So some theta okay. not and theta one value I have randomly chosen. If even even if you don't want to randomly choose, you just choose zero zero, zero theta not and zero theta one. Okay. 
so somewhere this line has come this is the first step of gradient descent just focus on the left hand side where i have set i am setting this line up randomly now i am going to show you the iterative process of gradient descent and how it how it you know uh, fit this particular uh, data points uh, to to find the optimum theta not and theta one which will fit this data as best as possible you see it starts from this random position now it goes like this like this okay. like this like this okay <clears throat> so in here now it finds the best isn't it even i if okay. you know, i will maybe show you a little bit yeah yeah this this one we are saying here my theta not is minus 900 okay hmm. and theta one is say minus 0.1 okay now if you see if from here it goes here in next iteration it goes here then it goes here then it here then here then here then here then here and then it finds the best fit okay so basically this this is how it it is going you see i when i told you that uh, gradient descent is there so it randomly starts from any position it, it will you know initialize theta not and theta one something randomly mm -hmm. and then in iteration you know it the line will keep on adjusting itself so that the cost is going to minimize it only focuses okay. on the fact that my error my the cost function that error value actual minus predicted that value is, should go down should be less mm -hmm. so it it goes in that direction and finally after few iterations it will fit it like this okay mm -hmm. now i will tell you in the same situation just look at this right hand side part okay this is your cost function j this cost function this cost function mathematically it is denoted by this mathematically it is denoted by j theta not and theta one why theta not and theta one in bracket because these are the two parameter which decides j okay so th this is mathematically represented by th j theta not and theta one okay and this hypothesis or this model is sometime represented as h theta x okay so these are just the okay. mathematical representation i am telling you so this cost function if you see here is on the right hand side okay mm -hmm. so in, in x axis this is theta not and this is theta 1 so some particular mm -hmm. random value of theta not and theta 1 see what is the what is the theta not here taken 900 right mm -hmm. see, if you extend this line it will cut it on 900 isn't it 900 yes and and the slope is negative isn't it the slope is downward so that is this is minus 1 mm -hmm. minus uh, point 1 sorry point 1 point 1 so so uh, minus point 1 why because the slope is like this if the slope would be like this then it will be positive So you see at point minus point one theta not theta one and nine hundred theta not this is the position which is coming isn't it? Mm -hmm. And this is basically this circle is showing you the error. So the error is very high. The error will be zero at this particular location mm. at the mid. So now how the gradient see how the gradient descent is working. as we are going ahead see the cost has from outer circle it has come to the inner circle mm -hmm. okay again going towards the inner circle again inner circle inner circle inner circle inner circle when you find the best fit it moves in the center of this whole thing there the error is almost zero i mean very minimum mm -hmm. you got it so at this particular theta 1 which is maybe 0.15 mm -hmm. and theta not maybe 100 something like here 100 mm -hmm. 
So at this particular theta naught and theta one, it has found the best fit. Error has decreased. Now this may seem a magic to you, or maybe you will be thinking that how is it every iteration how it is decreasing only? When you started from a random position, how are you making sure that it is going to decrease every time? Hmm. I mean, it's obvious question. I mean, when I was first studying yeah. gradient descent, I also used to wonder why it is every time decreasing. Why not it can go on increasing side? And and what is that particular thing which is making sure that the cost will always decrease? Hmm. Okay, uh, okay. So so now, so basically, I, I am basically building this thing so that at finally when I will be telling you. The logic behind how it is every time going on the best towards the best side. Uh, so, so, so the, you you will have by then you will have a whole scenario that how it is going on. So then that will be you know convenient to understand. So right now is there any problem or is there any doubt you can ask? Till now. Okay. Uh, we can grow further like. Uh... Uh, if you got if you get minimum error, we can go further. Like uh, still minimum error or still yeah. minimum. Yeah. So, they... yeah. So what happens is when you go on decreasing the uh, error. So at one point of time, see this is an iterative process. As I told you, it's an iterative process. So you went on iteration from iterations. You started from some random location where the error was used, and then you go on iterating, 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 and then you find the best minimum point. Now, uh, after this iteration, if you are again iterating, you will find that now the cost function is not decreasing anymore. Okay. So, so if you ask me how it is implemented, it is implemented that so while you go in a while loop mm -hmm. and you go on, you know, updating your theta naught and theta one, update mm -hmm. theta naught and theta one, mm -hmm. and till till when? It, it cannot go infinite, right? So, so as you asked, when that it will further go on minimizing, no, it will not go by because it is like while j of this theta naught and theta one of previous iteration minus j of theta naught theta one current iteration. Hmm. If you find that this particular difference is less than say 10 to the power minus 7, a very minimum value epsilon. Okay. If you find that, sorry, if you find that the cost, the error, the cost function which was coming in the previous iteration and the cost function which is coming in the current iteration, if it is not changing much, you will stop. If it is changing, suppose from the previous iteration, I had some error, cost function, I had some value of cost function and this in current iteration, the cost function value has not changed. It means the difference between them will be very less. So at that particular time, yeah. So at that particular time, I will stop. If it is more than epsilon, this this is a very small value, isn't it? Mm. Yes, ten ten times uh, sorry, seven times zero. Yeah, like this. So uh, so uh, that's what. Like I will go on iterating and you know getting the best fit line. Till the moment, till the iteration, I find that now my error is not minimizing further. Mm. Then you will stop. Okay. And okay. moreover, a, a very, you know, I will show you a very good thing. If you plot this cost function in iterations, okay, mm. 
you update your theta or not and theta one and then you calculate the cost function okay do you calculate this hmm okay you calculate this so you keep on calculating this and and you know save it in an array maybe or maybe save it in a in any variable and if you will plot it mm. if you will plot it here so this is iterations okay this is iteration iteration and this is mm. cost Hmm. Y axis is your cost and X axis is iteration. You will find that it starts from maybe a high cost value. When hmm. iteration is one, see this is iteration one, this is two, this is three, hmm. this is four, like this. This is five. Maybe this is going to hundred, right? So when you start, you will find that you start at at first iteration. You start from a uh, a high value. Then in second iteration, it will decrease. Then in th maybe it still decrease, 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 uh, decrease, and then at at some iteration you will find that now it is not decreasing. It has become a plateau. Mm. Now it is yeah. not decreasing. Or suppose you started from this side, from the, the maybe this is negative slope, then this is positive slope. So you will be going like this. You will be coming down like this. Your cost is minimizing, 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 and then you find that finally my cost has here at this particular area. Your cost is not changing at all, and that is the moment you will stop. And if you find this shape, this is called as a convex problem. This is called as convex problem. Or, or you can say your convex function. So your cost function here is a convex function. Why convex? When we say it a convex, when you have one minima, hmm. one optimal, or say one global minimum. Okay. When you have a linear relationship between independent variable and dependent variable, you will find that your cost function will have one global minimum, and you have to find the theta naught and theta one where this minima is achieved. Hmm. And this process of it in iterations, this process of coming down and down to achieve this minima, this process is called as GD. Gradient descent. Okay. Okay. So maybe you can start J, from yeah, yeah. G D. J you are taken. Yeah. J J. Mm -hmm. It is J previous or J actual current. No no. See here I am showing in it iterations. So in first iteration there will be some J. In second iteration there will be some J. Third iteration will be some J. Fourth iteration will be some J. Fifth, some J, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, right? Like the J will be there. Suppose in, you are in the eighth iteration here. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is your current J. The seventh iteration also you will save, and that will be your previous J. Mm -hmm. So when you will reach at this ninth iteration, maybe here, mm -hmm. you will find that the J value of ninth iteration and eighth iteration is same. It's not changing anymore. Mm, yes. So then you say that so so previous is just one before and and the current is the one you are it in the loop where you are right now. So if ninth is the current, eighth is the previous. If if fifth is the current, fourth is the previous. So in here, when you with, on three you had this j right on third iteration. On fourth iteration you had this j right. Mm. So you find that the J difference between J is huge. Mm. The difference yes. between the J values is greater mm. than this particular mm. thing, small value. Mm. So you keep on updating. You will go on updating till the time you are finding that your J is decreasing. You will go on updating and iterating, iterating, iterating. The moment you find that now the J is not changing, 
and the change in the previous and the current j is very less you will stop mm -hmm. okay okay so, th so this is the basically gradient descent algorithm now mm -hmm. so earlier i was writing it very vaguely i just if you remember in the first slide when i i did i wrote gradient descent i wrote very vaguely mm -hmm. that uh, randomly you start from somewhere and go on searching or go on finding the theta not and theta one for which the it finds the best fit or it the error is less i just mm -hmm. really now i will write the formal algorithm mm -hmm. so take random theta not and theta one theta one calculate j theta not theta 1 theta 1 this this you have to calculate now mm -hmm. while difference yeah this j previous previous you will calculate this this j theta not and theta 1 is your current right current and maybe this will get updated every time so j previous minus j current hmm. if the difference is more than some epsilon which is a very small value yeah. 10 minus 7 yeah so if if this is greater than that value it means your j is changing you will update theta not and theta 1 like this like this and you will calculate your j current again calculate your j current then again you will go to this loop you will see this updated theta 1 theta 1 you will calculate i mean this j current and j previous will be the previous theta not and theta 1 okay so basically what you can do this step you can put it here okay so that will be your current Absolutely. this will be your new current this will be your old current previous so basically you have to maintain two variable for that okay and then you will go on checking this and you will be updating your theta like this now here the weird thing which you saw is this hmm that that's fine i understood the overview part i mean this is the most basic thing of linear regression this is the most complicated or you can say the deep deepest thing which we are going to i mean there is nothing more to it so so if you have understood till now this is the final thing which you need to understand now so we have seen that okay you start from any theta not and theta one in iterations it will go on finding the theta not and theta one value where the error will go on minimizing and how it minimizes that graph also i showed you right it's a convex function mm -hmm. where in iterations it, it it will go towards the slope if it starts from here it will go towards the slope and it will go towards the minimum and it will go it will finally reach to the minimum error right now that particular question which was there at that time also that what is the magic or what is the thing which is making sure that every time you are always going down so this is the particular equ equation of theta not and theta one which is making sure now coming to these equations basically in every iteration your theta not will become the previous theta not you had this is the this theta not is the previous theta not okay previous mm. 
minus you will always subtract this because you know what is your hypothesis your hypothesis is this right yes x now somehow this value is coming very high than the actual one right okay so you have to decrease your parameter in order to make it closer towards the actual isn't it now so this theta not and theta one so from previous theta not and theta one this is the update formula i mean when i say when i vaguely say that update your theta not and theta one such that it goes to the minimum how are you actually going to write a program how are you actually going to update so update is going to be like this theta not equal to theta one previous minus there is a learning rate called as alpha this alpha is called as learning rate This is called as learning rate. Just have okay. little patient, uh, patience. You will you will get all the all the things. Okay. And this is something called as this cost function theta naught theta one upon with respect to theta naught. So this is the updation formula basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. this uh, this thing this particular thing if you see. this is called as partial differentiation of cost function with respect to theta not hmm. okay so so if you are aware of, about this, so that's why you know when when we talked about machine learning and all i told you that the pre in the prerequisite side uh, you must know python little bit basic and you should also hmm. know little bit of linear algebra and probability theory so so that is what this is the level of mathematics it requires i mean just the basic level or the the level which we study in our school time this uh, differentiation uh, maybe linear algebra matrix multiplication and these kind of things may you may have to brush up but anyway i mean that's why this training is all about i will be telling you these things also okay yeah so if you if you remember differentiation what is the differentiation of x square it's uh, dx hmm so 2x x right if i will say x cube it will be 3x square right if it is basically okay. if it is xn it becomes n x n minus 1 Yes. Okay. Now this differentiation, what does it say? I mean, I am going to little bit basic. What what is mean by the derivative? Derivative means when I am saying, see, when I am saying, what is the derivative of x square? You said two x. So what it means actually? It means the derivative of x square with respect to x is two hmm. x. it means if you change this x x square will change in this in this way okay so derivative means how how is your change value changing with respect to x how is the value of the function changing with respect to x derivative means see in in physics we, we usually study that uh, you know you have suppose you are riding a bike okay mm. so you started from say 5 km per hour speed and in 5 seconds you went up to 50 km per hour mm. so basically how you in time in with respect to time how did you make the change in the in the speed so basically you went 45 km you you went 45 km in per hour in 5 seconds right from 5 to 50 so so in one second basically you are increasing 9 in one second you are increasing 9 km per hour speed isn't it 
Mm-hmm. So this I so that's why and this is called as acceleration. If you remember in physics, we call it acceleration, yeah. which is derivative of velocity with respect to time. Time. So the derivative tells. and that how is your velocity changing in respect to time so if you went from 5 to 50 in 5 seconds it means that in every second you are increasing mind so if one second more you i mean if i increase second by one your speed will increase by mind isn't it mm-hmm. so in in this yeah. particular example if i increase x by one If I increase x by one, suppose if I increase the value by one, your x square value will increase by two into one. If I increase the value of, uh, say, say by two, if I increase the value of x by two, your this thing will uh, maybe change by four value of four. Okay. so 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 this is a particular kind of relationship so if you started from say 5 km per hour to 50 km per hour hmm, hmm. so basically 45 km per hour change you have made and suppose this thing you went in 5 seconds so in 1 second you will go 9 km per hour right so if okay. i increase the time by 1 second your Speed is going to change by nine kilometer per hour. Nine kilometer. Right. So here the derivative is change, telling one is to nine ratio is there, right? Hmm. Just a relationship of I mean I I want to give you the intuition of derivative here, okay? And hmm. that is the particular intuition which is involved here. That is the particular magic which is involved here. That is the particular thing which is making sure in gradient descent. that your error will always decrease with respect to theta not because what is this this is saying that what is the derivative of the error with respect to theta not it means how much theta not i will change if if i change mm-hmm. theta not by something how much error is going to change this is the same thing if you if you apply this this intuition into here mm-hmm. it's it's the same intuition like how much your error is going to change if i if i change the theta not okay okay and you are taking the negative gradient right you are taking the negative you are subtracting this funda right Oh yes. So when you are taking the negative gradient, you will always go downhill, like this. Hmm. If you start from here, you will go like this. You will you will be taking the downhill. Why you are taking the downhill? If if I would have taken this plus, you will have gone like this, upwards. Hmm. Hmm. But here we take negative gradient, so you will always go down. And what is this gradient? What what is this funda gradient? The gradient is just the value which tells that if you change theta not by something, the cost, the error will change by this much. So, hmm. so the intuitionally, if you see, if you, it's it's this thing like how much theta not you are going to change in order to. change your error so what i want i want my error to minimize so i want that my error should minimize so for error to minimize how much theta not you are going to change this particular gradient will tell you that and the amount of change it is saying you will subtract it from your previous theta in order to go down hmm. having said that i will write the updation formula again previous minus learning rate i will come to learning rate again okay mm-hmm. and theta 1 will be updated in the similar fashion theta 1 will be updated like this previous minus 
sorry this is theta zero okay so both are updated like this in each iteration of gradient descent now now can you uh, imagine i mean can you tell me the whole algorithm once again see start from random position yes start from random position start calculate the cost position. function calculate the cost function where it is cost cost function yes. and and then update your theta not theta 1 in the negative gradient direction like this Okay. And then again, calculate the cost function. See if the cost function is changing. If the error is going down, check it. Check if the error is going down. Then again update. Again check the error is going down. Again update. Again check the error going down. Again update the theta in the negative gradient. And go on iterating through this iterative process. Till then, when you find that now your error is not changing, your error has become a plateau. now your okay. error is not changing so then you stop updating it and that particular theta not and theta one is the best parameter you have find and now when you will plot this suppose on this particular this was your historical data and now if the theta not and theta one which you have arrived with if you will plot this it will come like this because that's the best theta not and theta one you find that you found that now the error has become minimum okay mm. so i i just wanted to tell you that what is the uh, right now as of now you just forget this alpha okay this may confuse you i will i will tell the role of this learning parameter again so right now you just see that this is the thing which is happening from the previous theta not and theta one you are going to update this so we are basically taking the gradient gradient means how much error is changing with respect to theta not and theta one is it is it, is this thing seems fine to you i mean till now do you have any problem or if you have any query you can Ask. Hmm. Uh, theta zero. Yeah. And theta one. Yeah. Uh, it is. Uh, it is our predicted and uh, actual values. Uh, no, no. Theta not and theta one is. basically i am start taking a random theta not and theta one theta one tells me the intercept That's of this it. line okay. and theta th this is theta not this particular yeah, theta and theta one tells me the slope okay the actual and predicted values are something the predicted value is with this particular theta not if i if i do this this yes, is like yes. predicted thing predicted. and actual is totally different actual we have in historical data okay hmm. so while when i say that in gradient descent you start from a random position and then you calculate the cost function so how do you calculate this cost function you calculate this cost function by doing this for by going Summation through this out. formula the you call you calculate the predicted Predicted. Calculate the actual. This is the actual. This is the predicted, and you subtract it, square over, sum it over all the data points, and average it. Okay. This is the cost function basically. This is going yes. to minimize in in the iterations. It is going to minimize as a convex problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah so 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 theta not and theta ones are called the parameter of the model it is what it what it is called it is called parameter of the model okay x is called as independent variable y is called as dependent variable and and j is called cost function which is calculated by actual minus predicted sum over square over and sum over all the data point and then divided by the number of data So x is the size of uh, flat, mm -hmm. and y is the cost of flat. Price of flat. Yes. Yes. And uh, theta zero is uh, 
a point uh, where it's intercept in uh, x axis mm -hmm. and uh, theta, 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 theta is where in y axis y axis okay mm -hmm. and theta 1 is intercept on x axis uh, not on x axis no, it's a slope basically no no okay the m is the slope of the line yeah, yeah. it's the, it's the okay, so so how we calculate the slope then? How we get the value of theta one? Sorry, theta zero. So th that's what I, I told you. Slope. Theta naught mm -hmm. and theta one initially we start with any random value. Say okay, so okay. zero zero. So when okay okay. And then you uh, you know go on updating it like this. So you can calculate the new theta naught and theta one value with this formula. Okay. Theta naught is equal to. I mean, there is something. I mean, still there are a few things left. So, so don't worry about uh, the calculation part. I will come to the calculation part again. Right mm -hmm. now, I just want you to understand this formula. Okay. So. Yeah. So so okay. so that's the thing as of now. Uh, you say uh, so everything is fine till here yeah yeah fine fine okay great so now i will move ahead a little bit yeah so now you now you maybe you would like to know that how this theta or not and theta one is actually calculated like partial differentiation is fine tell me the final formula which i should write in python and calculate this isn't it Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, see, you do not need to worry about all these algorithms and I mean, you don't need to worry that how am I going to implement this whole thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in that, that the library which I showed you, a scale on library, in that library, all these algorithms are, you know, implemented for you in Python. You only okay. have to call the functions. Uh, the, the fit function or the training function, it will do the fitting and the mathematical part it takes care that time. Okay. okay. The mathematical, this particular session, I mean for every model, I go like this only, that I will give you the theoretical foundation, the mathematical mm -hmm. foundation for this, so that you at least you have a clear understanding of the machine learning model. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so okay. while implementing, you may need. I mean, why? See, why will you need to implement all these things when when people have already built? I mean, when people have already implemented a very efficient and a very good way, they have implemented libraries. So, why would you like to implement it? Of course, for hands-on coding or for getting the real feel of the algorithms, you can maybe you can sit somewhere and write the whole gradient descent algorithm in Python. Just to, just for fun or just for you know have a feel of better uh, you know hands on in Python maybe you would like to implement this but there are so many models and how many models are you going to write and I mean of course uh, you know the the big shots in ML if you ask them they can write uh, the the codes also if you will see the guys the the guys over the internet are there they they will be some of them will, they are interested in, you know, writing the algorithms from scratch. So, I mean, I, I can also, given a day, maybe I can also write this whole thing in, in Python. Maybe if you understand this code well, maybe you can spend also, uh, maybe two, three days, uh, some time you can take and you can understand it well and you can write it from scratch also. But, okay. but then again, uh, so, so there you see, huh, you have to take random theta naught and theta one. And then you have to uh, take a while loop where you are maintaining two variables, j previous minus j, uh, j these two variables and you will take a very less value, maybe epsilon, uh, another variable you will take. And then you will mm -hmm. maybe call a function say gd or say update, GD. update theta naught and theta one. And this linear algebra, of, uh, you know, this linear algebra equation, this equation, uh, sorry j and this 
this you can update uh, you know implement in another function which you will call here it i mean you can write a modular program for that it's not a big deal if you will tell me i maybe i can show you that uh, scratch implementation also sometime mm -hmm. okay okay so now maybe last final thing i will tell you mm. in this uh about how this updation is going on well if you have to write the python code for this what would you be writing sorry this was something like this this is a sign of partial differentiation actually this so is this partial, partition, yeah. yeah partial differentiation is little bit different from full differentiation so you write okay. something like this D, huh? and then you write something like this these yes. two are there is a little bit of difference i will come to that in a moment but yeah as of okay. now you understand this okay now can you tell me i am i am going to derive something actually mathematically what is the j what is j J is uh, hmm. what J is cost function? Theta zero, theta zero. Mm -hmm. Sorry, is the one by n summation of mm -hmm. uh, theta actual and theta previous and uh, uh, theta, the root. theta or y? Is it theta? Theta zero. Isn't it y the price? Price, yes, price is y. Isn't it the, the y predicted y yes, is y actual, right? Mm -hmm. This is a theta, y, y. right? Yeah. Okay. Now this thing I can also write it something like this. Uh, yeah, hello, hello, hello. So basically, this can be written as again now one by n n, and now what is y hat? Isn't it theta naught plus theta one x? Yes, yes. So I can write it like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. This whole thing. Now again, I can write this whole thing as C. This particular thing, this particular thing you can assume it as a one single thing so one single item right like you have x okay. square so you you have this x so something square is there right so i can write it something like 1 by n now i am doing the differentiation okay mm -hmm. i equal to 1 plus n this will thing will come outside as this is just the constant thing which will which is there it, this thing okay. will be there in derivative also, so it, it is outside now. Now, if you will divide, do the derivative of this, this will become like x square become 2x. So it will become 2 into 2 theta Something plus theta very x minus y. Isn't it? Y. Yes. This it will become, right? Now, hmm. in the assumption of cost function, when, when I write like this, it is initially taken as 1 upon 2n. Just an assumption, we, we start with 2n. See, n is anywhere constant, and 2 is also a constant, so you can take it 2n, right? Mm -hmm. So here, we to take 2n everywhere. So it is defined like that, that your uh, linear regression cost function will be something like predicted minus actual squared over and summed over 1 to n and averaged over 1 upon 2n. 
So initially just you don't get confused, I only told you n, but 2 is also there. They have defined like this and that 2 is basically kept here in order so that this 2 and this 2 get cancelled. So finally your formula becomes theta naught minus 1 by n sigma i to n and basically this predicted value huh, minus actual value this this thing is, is your formula final formula through which you will update your theta this is your theta new this was your theta previous okay okay and this okay. thing you will calculate so now there is no def, uh, function now there is no formula it's it's totally now values which you know you know theta naught you know theta one you know x you know actual y this is y actual so you know everything now you can calculate literally you can implement this particular equation and you can get the values of new theta so this is how you implement your this is how you implement your theta naught and theta one also similarly will be done see when from here from this step when i did the partial differentiation so it became two like x square x square becomes two x similarly this will become 2 theta naught plus theta 1 x minus y and then it is in respect to theta naught right so when you do again the differentiation of theta naught it will it is nothing but just one here so it will be multiplied by one so there is nothing there right okay, you got okay. That point, na? like if you have to if i ask you what is the partial differentiation of this term What is the differentiation of this term? We will say 2, two. two into 2x two yes. huh. hmm. and then again 1, 2 because hmm. actually you have to do the differentiation of this, right? So because of this power you made it 2, 2x, two 1, hmm. And then this term also, you will go on differentiating it until this x is alone. So again, you will differentiate this term, so you will get 2. What is the differentiation of 2x? It will be 2, right? 2. So finally, it will become something like this, 2 into 2 into 2, so 8x. Okay. So similarly here also, and, and the in, you know, when we say differentiation, it will go like this. When we say partial differentiation, we will consider all the terms like this partial differentiation we are taking in respect of theta naught, right? So we will consider all this theta 1, x, y, all this 0. In partial differentiation, when you have an equation and you have to do the partial differentiation, all the other terms except the term or except the variable which you are taking in respect of, Except that variable, everything becomes zero. Okay, so so these terms will become zero. So only this will remain, and then dot one will be there. Okay. If you calculate the same, so theta naught we saw that it will it is simple theta naught minus uh, one by n is left. I equal to one to n, and then basically theta not plus theta 1 x which is nothing but the hypothesis minus y actual this this is no square remember a square has been cut by this i mean after differentiation that the square was gone so this is the formula for theta not theta 1 will be similarly written as theta 1 minus if you if you, I am not going through the derivation, but if you go through mm -hmm. the same derivation on your own, you will find something like this, theta naught plus theta 1 x for theta. Now this is in respect, this differentiation was done in respect to theta 1 y actual 
And then when you will do the again the differentiation of this, here you will find in respect to theta 1, if you if you if do, are doing the partial differentiation in respect of theta 1, you will find here multiplied by x. Because the differentiation of theta 1 x will be with respect to theta 1. Mm -hmm. If I do this, I will get x, right? So, okay. So that is again multiplied here. So these are the two concrete formula now I am saying. There is no more derivation, there is no more formula Raji. Only the concrete formula now I am saying. This, this is the concrete formula for gradient descent. So what you do? You go on updating this in a loop. Randomly take any, randomly take any theta naught and theta 1. Then while your delta cost basically of previous minus actual is greater than some epsilon go on using this formula for updating and then check again delta c then again go and update then again check so like that i showed you this thing it started from a random location here theta naught and theta one then in next iteration it how this from this line how do you arrive at this line basically your theta naught and theta one got updated with this formula okay and then again you went to this how your theta naught and theta one is get updated theta naught theta one get up, is getting updated and finally you arrive at this where your delta cost is now not changing okay so in here, okay, okay. theta naught and theta one is my parameter. Theta naught and theta one is my parameter. Okay, and mm -hmm. the for a parameter of line model basically, and y actually is the price of historical data. X is the size of flat in this particular example, and this whole thing is basically the approximation of price. Again given the x i can approximate the price okay and uh, yeah so so that's that's all you know in gradient descent what you have you can you can find this uh, similar thing see this is a convex function which i was saying you know so it starts from any place from here and it goes down 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 and finally it will reach to the minima this is a convex function problem something like this see it has started from a hill, it went down, 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 and then it finds the global. Okay. This, this, this is just for intuition, okay? See, this is the formula we arrived at, right? Gradient descent algorithm. Repeat until convergence. Convergence means when your error is not, not changing. So, theta 1 will be equal to theta 1 minus 1 upon m. m here is what I was taking n, capital M. They are taking and uh, this is your hypothesis. This is nothing but theta naught plus theta one x minus y. And while updating theta one, this x i will also come here. The same formula which I showed you in paint that is there. Okay. See, he, he has also shown you that how to do the partial differentiation with respect to theta naught and with respect to theta one. This will come. Anyway, these, these things are just like that. Uh, this is again the cost function which I was showing you. The how it goes down, down, down in the iterations. Okay? Okay, okay. Okay, so, I mean, okay, fine. This slide, I you, you don't refer to this slide because there is a lot of things written over there. Maybe you will be getting confused. But yeah, this is, this is one of the slides which which I find, I will, I will uh, maybe send you this slide, uh, linear regression with this uh, gradient descent. This, this slide has, uh, whatever things I have taught you, this, uh, this slide con contains the, all the equations, all the parameters. Th this is the cost function, isn't it? For linear yeah. regression. Hypothesis, this is the predicted, this is the actual. And I is for basically 
each training example from i to n and this 2n we divide it so that we can average it out our okay. goal, our goal is to minimize this cost function okay so this is how and this is the gradient descent algorithm begin with some theta random theta not and theta one keep changing them to minimize your cost and hope to arrive at global minimum this is how you update your theta not and theta one but this i have elaborated and i have shown you the literal values also literal formula also how it is done okay 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 great so yeah this thing may be yeah so th this completes our linear regression uh, model basically okay uh, yeah this this completes our linear regression model and uh, Uh, maybe we will be seeing uh, the the practical python part of it in the next class just one last thing which i wanted to tell you that if this is the cost function okay this is the cost function and this is the iteration which i was telling this, this uh, already we have seen this right yeah in iterations we we always go down the gradient right so mm -hmm. i told you that the theta not or or i will make a general statement theta my thetas this theta belongs to basically now this theta is a vector theta not theta one so i am making a general statement taking both theta not and theta one into account so theta will be updated like this theta minus this partial differentiation of j With respect to theta. Now this parameter I have not talked about till yet. This is called as learning rate, right? This is again a very important parameter. So sometimes what happens? This gradient when you start randomly, this gradient will be a very big number. Okay, you start from some theta. you started from some theta and you were you you are subtracting this gradient right now suppose this gradient which we have calculated something like this we have calculated right through the partial differentiation we have calculated this right mm -hmm. so this particular value suppose it goes a very high number then instead of you know slowly converging slowly moving towards the downhill it will take a very big step and then it will again take a very big step again it will take a very step big step and then maybe it, it will again try converging again go overshoot then again come down come down so basically it will be overshooting the minima and it will never be able to reach this minimum position some that's that's what see this may seem little bit confusing to you that why how are you till now you were saying that okay we will go slowly in iterations like this suppose you started from here so we will go like this then we will towards the gradient like this so this we have to take this baby steps right slowly mm. to converge towards this now sometimes what happens that when you are starting from a random position your error is so high that the these steps are very big so what happens maybe you have to reach here but you are your steps are so big that you can overshoot this point then your cost see we are making sure that every time the cost goes down but then your cost will go up and maybe again it starts going down with big steps and then maybe again it overshoots so this is a problem when you have a very big gradient so to control the gradient value there is something called as learning rate which is kept so suppose your partial differentiation of this becomes a very big number say 1000 it becomes 1000 now 1000 is such a big number that it will overshoot it It directly comes down to maybe it takes a big step and then it overshoots the minima and it never reaches to minima. 
so to control this thousand and in order to take very little little baby steps this alpha parameter is multiplied okay and this alpha parameter will be taken something like the alpha will be like 0.01 so if your gradient is becoming thousand it will it will make it 10 10 so this learning rate is also called as controlling parameter control parameter it will control the value of j theta and j. it will this learning parameter will make sure this learning parameter is usually taken a very small number maybe 0 0.01 is, is the standard value which people use so this is taken a very low number like 0 0.01 because it makes sure that your gradient is not a very big value even if it is coming very big it will diminish it so that you can take a baby step towards the downhill you got, you got it you got the point of learning it yeah 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 so that's 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 why this control parameter is used okay is it always constant 0 0.1 yeah yeah people see people try it with what what people actually do people will try with 0 0.01 0 0.001 0.05 different value people try and they say see that how it is performing and how the gradient i mean how the cost is reducing okay but mostly 0.01 is the parameter which usually it is taken okay okay by default i mean it, it is taken 0.01 only but in a, so this sums up our linear regression model okay mm, yeah okay so so yesterday we have seen uh, this demo in, in the starting this python part we have seen how to you know take a list a numpy array how to read something how to manipulate your data how to multiply uh, or, or subtract your arrays all those things we have seen in the previous session right so tomorrow using those things and the python coding basically we will be doing a linear regression with single variable example fine and fine, fine. i will give you a, a, a assignment kind of thing or maybe for your practice another data set which will be linear regression with multiple variable okay so in that problem basically you will have two variable so you can try that out and maybe in next session we will discuss that okay 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 